Hi, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Sirius Pro mount. So let's get started. Well, right now I've got it set up in equatorial mode, but if you wanted to use it in Altaz mode, it's actually quite simple to, uh, to convert it. You just adjust the altitude knob here until it goes all the way up to 90 degrees. And then once it's at 90 degrees, you take this little screw here on the front and you lock down the altitude axis so it stays put in the Altaz position. And there you are, now it's in Altaz mode. The next step after you've got the telescope set up basically in this configuration is to polar align it. Now we have an optional polar finder which can make uh, the, the alignment even more accurate. But if you're just going to be doing some visual uh, work, you, you probably don't need to be that accurate. But definitely if you're going to do long exposure photography, I'd say get the optional polar alignment scope so you can be dead on uh, accurate. So to accurately polar align, you've got to aim this axis uh, directly to the North Pole, which is just off of Polaris. And you do that with the two motions on the mount. The altitude, which is this jack screw here, spring-loaded. So you push it in and you adjust either down or up. And on the side of the mount is a uh, scale from 0 to 90 degrees declination. So you look at your latitude on Earth. So here in the uh, San Francisco, San Jose Bay Area, we're at about 37 degrees. So I would, just to get a rough alignment, bring this down to 37 degrees, right about there. And then the left and right adjustment, the azimuth, is done with the little push-push screws on the side that uh, are surrounding that little pin. When you attach the head to the tripod, you saw that pin that was sticking up on the north side. That's the, the pin that these two screws push against. So you loosen one, and you tighten the other, and it might be hard to see from there, but you can fine tune the left and right positioning uh, of, pol of the uh, polar mount. So if you're just doing visual, just find Polaris in the sky, aim it roughly there, and you're probably pretty good. But again, if you wanted to do long exposure deep sky photography, get the optional polar scope, attach it onto the side, and then do these just adjustments while looking through the polar scope to make sure you're absolutely dead on polar aligned. Once you've got a polar line and the mount's pretty much ready to go, uh, you can attach the telescope. Make sure you balance the scope, and that involves loosening both axes, both east and west, and you can do it separately if you want, or you can do it all together, and north and south, and bringing the scope over to the side and then seeing which way the telescope will fall on its own with gravity. So right now I'm a little bit uh, counterweight heavy because it wants to fall that way. But I've just realized I, I haven't put on everything. I haven't put my finder scope on, the diagonal, the eyepiece, all that stuff that you'd usually use with the telescope itself. So once you've got that all on there, then balance it and make sure it basically stays put um, and there's no stress on the gears. After that, it's time to do the computer alignment. For the computer alignment, you want to start the telescope in the home position, uh, if you're in equatorial mode like this. So home position is pointed north, the telescope pointed north, with a counterweight shaft pointing down. You turn on the mount, and you wait for the hand controller to go through the initialization phase. Just give it a couple of seconds here. The first thing it asks if, is if you are in equatorial mode or in Altaz mode. So right now I'm in equatorial mode, obviously, so I will hit EQ. And it goes through some initial warnings. Don't look at the sun if you don't have a proper solar filter. It asks you to set your longitude and latitude. So look on your smartphone, go onto the computer, look on a map, uh, find your longitude latitude and enter it here. Yeah, so I'm going to say we're west 120 degrees, and I'll just kind of figure it out because I don't know the exact latitude right now. North 37 degrees. The time zone. Uh, if you're in the Western Hemisphere, it's always a negative number, so negative 8 for Pacific time here in the, on the West Coast. And then your elevation, if you want to be very accurate about it, the date, and then the time. You don't have to be dead on using atomic time, just look at your watch and, and, and put in the time. And then you have to tell it if you're in daylight savings time or not, so always put in your, your standard um, uh, time zone and then daylight savings time set to yes or no. The hand controller then gives you an hour angle, and that can be used if you have the optional polar alignment scope uh, attached to it. You can use it to put Polaris in the proper uh, orientation around the center circle, and that will get you very dead on polar aligned. So you hit enter to get past that. Next, it's going to ask you if you wish to begin alignment or not. So, of course, we'll say yes. And you've got a couple of modes. There's a one-star alignment, a two-star alignment, three-star alignment, and then a couple of other modes as well. 
for the purposes of just this demonstration, I'm going to pick one star just to make it quick and easy. The more stars you use, the more accurate the alignment will be. So I'd say you definitely do a two or three star alignment for, for the most accurate go-to across the entire sky. So the one star alignment, I'm going to hit enter. It's going to ask for a star, and it's going to search for stars that are up for your time of night and your location. It suggested my first star was Arcturus, so that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to slew to where it thinks Arcturus is. All right, once it gets close, it goes into a centering speed and it's still actually moving. There we go. Okay, so now it's it's where it thinks it is. Now it's not going to be dead on because you've done a, a rough home alignment and a polar alignment. So now it asks you to use the arrow keys on the hand controller to center the star uh, into the eyepiece. So I'm just going to move it up, down, left, and right, and pretend I'm actually doing an alignment. So right now, let's just say I've got it centered in the eyepiece. You hit enter, and then it'll say alignment successful. So now it knows where things are and you can use the hand controller to uh, go to whatever object you want. I mentioned the polar scope as an optional accessory for this mount, uh, but there's one other uh, item I wanted to mention. This is the optional extension tube for the pier. With a small refractor like this, it's probably not necessary because your eyepiece is gonna be about right here. Um, so when you're sitting in a chair, that's perfectly fine. But let's say you had a longer refractor and the eyepiece can get pretty low down on the bottom there, or maybe a bigger, cast grain with the eyepieces down on the bottom end. It might be nice to raise up the, the mount a bit. So the, this is a 6.3 inch extension tube. It fits directly below the head on top of this pier and just raises everything up a little bit. So keep it in mind if you think your eyepiece is a little too low and you want to get a, 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 a bit better comfortable angle on the, on the view. All right, well, there you have it. Uh, I hope this video showed you how to use the Series Pro mount. It's actually fairly simple once you get used to the, the uh, mechanics of it. So thank you very much and clear skies.